How's it going, everybody? This is me, a quick video talking about the fact that the Supreme Court has just had 10 Second Amendment cases redistributed to them for conference this Friday, um, May 15, 2020. So first and foremost, if this is your first time at this channel and seeing my channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I put a lot of Second Amendment related content out and I try to educate people on the Second Amendment, on laws, and just various Second Amendment talk bits as much as I can. Also, if you're one of my subscribers or viewers and you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. Um, if you follow the Instagram, you get a lot of behind the scenes stuff and extra content. So that's a good way to get further um, engaged with the uh, channel and with me. So as a quick background, as many of you are aware, there was a case before the Supreme Court a couple of weeks ago, the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association via New York City. And what happened in that is the Supreme Court essentially found that that case was moot, kicked it back down to the district court, there was dissent by uh, Justice Toledo and some other justices concurring like Gorsuch and Thomas. And then Judge Kavanaugh actually concurred with the majority opinion. But he said in that opinion that soon there would be time for the Supreme Court to take a look at some of these Second Amendment cases. Following that decision of finding the uh, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case moot, that very week, 10 Second Amendment cases were distributed to the Supreme Court. So four days later, they were distributed to um, the Supreme Court for conference. They looked over them and we were all anticipating the uh, Monday's appearance, hoping that the Supreme Court would uh, grant cert to some of these Second Amendment cases. And a lot of us were anticipating, based on what had just happened with the New York State uh, Rifle and Pistol Association case, that the Supreme Court would grant cert to some of these Second Amendment cases. But when we got that order list on Monday, which was like two weeks ago, there was no Second Amendment cases on it. So a lot of people were saying that the Supreme Court, I guess, rejected these Second Amendment cases. There was a lot of misinformation, but essentially no action was kind of good in a sense. We would have rather them granted cert right then and there, but the fact that they did not say uh, cert was denied or anything like that on the orders list meant that they were still pending and that they could be redistributed to conference and the Supreme Court could decide to take them up. Well, as of today, we just got information on the uh, Supreme Court's website that the 10 cases have been redistributed to the Supreme Court and they will decide whether they are going to grant cert or not. But what I actually think is this is good that it's been redistributed so fast back to the Supreme Court. I don't think they got a chance to really look at these cases in their prior conference because it had just happened so fast especially in regard to the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case had being just denied and was just found moot. I don't think the Supreme Court really got a chance to look at some of these cases. So I think now is them really going to take a look at it. And so if you're not aware about these 10 cases, there's one that's very significant to the state of California, which is Pena v. Horon. And what that case involves is uh, California's uh, statute that has micro stamping laws and puts the handgun roster in place and essentially prohibits individuals like me and you residents of the state of California from getting our hands on handguns that are in common use and are traditionally used for lawful uses like self-defense. So Pena v. Huron is the major one for the state of California, but there are a lot of other cases on this list. There are 10 cases, a lot of them that have significant nationally and also um, would help apply some precedent to the state of California. A lot of the cases, especially I think six of them, deal with CCW laws and individuals right under the Second Amendment to carry their firearm outside of their house in public. So those six cases are very important. I mean, they would have great implication in the state of California since we have um, really bad CCW laws, reciprocity issues with other states, stuff like that. So it, not these national cases or these other cases that may be directly touching on other states still will have a big impact on the state of California and all other states if the Supreme Court decides to take them up if they decide to grant cert and then we get some sort of favorable ruling, it could have major implications for the state of the Second Amendment in the US. Also very important is there are a couple cases that deal with assault weapons bans and magazine capacity bans. So again, that does not just affect you know a specific state or a specific no locality because if we have a favorable ruling on that, it would also touch on places like the state of California where we have assault weapons ban and large capacity magazine bans. So my general takeaway, I think this is a good thing. Looking through the record of some of the order lists for the last two weeks, a lot of the cases that were granted cert were actually cases that were redistributed from the week prior or the couple weeks prior. And I actually looked these up. I looked up a few of them. And so what happened in some of these cases is just like in these ones, they were distributed for conference one week, no action by the Supreme Court that following Monday. They were redistributed the next week. They were heard on that conference and the Supreme Court granted cert that following Monday. 
And so there's sort of this track record with the Supreme Court right now with them um, granting cert to these redistributed cases. Now, do I think that they're going to grant cert in all 10 cases? No, I don't think that they're going to do that, especially since there are six cases that deal specifically with like CCW laws and carrying a firearm outside of your house. I think what they would do there is if they were going to take up a case, they will just pick one. They will pick one in a state that is highly prohibitive because that would have the larger implications if it does get shot down. Also with the assault weapons um, ban cases and the magazine capacity ban cases, I think again, they would take up one of them. And I think there is a good likelihood that they will also take up the uh, California handgun roster case as well with the Pena v. Horan case because it is so unique from some of these other cases. And especially because the Pena v. Horan case deals specifically with handguns, with the common use of handguns for self-defense, and I think that that case touches closer to the Heller v. DC decision, so it's easier for them to apply the stare decisis or the precedent that was set in a Heller v. DC to this specific case. So if they really wanted an easy one, an easy application from their precedent to a new case, um, I think Pena v. Haran has the facts and is the scenario that best fits the precedent that's already in place. Now, a lot of you have asked, well, are, do you think they'll take more than one case? And in my opinion, I think if the Supreme Court, especially with the makeup right now, if they do take a Second Amendment case, my hope would be that they would do so trying to reshape the uh, law surrounding the Second Amendment. And when I say reshape, I'm not saying it in a bad way. When you look at constitutional law and the development of certain constitutional laws and fundamental rights and the um, Supreme Court decisions on some of these fundamental rights, like the First Amendment, what you see is when the Supreme Court actually decided to address some of the issues, they did it in a slew of cases. They took up multiple cases and really framed the precedent around that specific issue. And especially if some of these uh, justices who were just put in place, like Kavanaugh, like Gorsuch, if they really wanted to make a name for themselves in jurisprudence, I think that they could take up these cases in slew. So I think we really could maybe get three cases if they are trying to be aggressive, if they are trying to restructure the discussion and the law around the Second Amendment and really establish um, fundamental rights and our fundamental right to second, the Second Amendment, I think if their goal is to do that, we could see them take up multiple cases. So that's just a quick update on what is going on in the Supreme Court right now. This is an interesting time. It's rare that we see so many cases even be distributed to conference to the Supreme Court. I know that the same thing has happened just a couple weeks ago, but I think since it was so close to them finding that the prior case was moot, I mean, it was just that very week, I don't think they had an opportunity to really digest these cases. Now a couple weeks has passed, their law clerks have gotten to write out their opinions, They've, the justices have really got to like mow these over, especially if we had kind of a swing justice, like maybe if Kavanaugh was on the fence or something like that is going on, they've had a lot more time to digest this. So I think maybe this following week, we really will get some sort of decision by the Supreme Court, whether they are going to grant cert or whether they're going to deny cert. If you found this video helpful and you would like to support the channel, the best way to do that is to join my Patreon. And I'll put a link to the Patreon down in the details. Another way you can support the channel is using the various affiliate links also found in the details. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, a nation that draws a great distinction between its scholars and its warriors, while its laws are by cowards and its wars fought by fools.